Hey guys, what's going on? Tyler here, and today we are talking all about the button on Elementor. This is going to be call to action buttons, link buttons, everything you need to know about designing and styling a button. It's all going to be in this video, so be sure and stay tuned. All right, guys, so first things first here, we need to drag and drop a button and place it on our web page. Now, this is going to work for Elementor free users as well as Elementor pro users. And if you're not a pro user yet and you're considering upgrading to this amazing plugin, be sure and check out the link down below in the description. I highly recommend this pro premium plugin to everyone just because it has so many features and it is an amazing plugin. It really allows you to manipulate and alter your website just and customize everything to the maximum capability and it allows you to do that so simply with this Elementor drag and drop builder. So I highly recommend it. Be sure and check that link down below in the description. But let's drag in our button and get started here. So it's just this simple. You hover over here the button element. You click and drag and drag it right in to this column here. All right, now that we have that there, we're just gonna go ahead and get right into the manipulating and styling of this button here. So the type right here, you can click that. It has, it's set a default, which is the default setting there, but you can set it to like info, success, or warning. This is just simply gonna change the color of it and make it look a little bit more of whatever type they're showing here. I leave mine at default just because that's pretty basic and that's what I'm gonna, typically go from and then I'll just go ahead and edit and alter from there. So for text, this is the text that is actually going to appear on the button. So right here, they have just click here as the default. Um, for this example sake, we'll just say get started. All right, perfect. So we've got the get started button all set up right there. And then right here is where we're going to go ahead and actually set our link. Now, this is very important. Your button is not going to do anything unless you set a link here. So we have a few options here if we want this link to open in a new window or add a no follow. Um, we can also use these dynamic tags. This will actually link dynamically to something else, maybe a post or a different page or anything like that but we can simply just go ahead and put this link in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and link it to my thank you page where we're gonna assume that they've made a purchase, they click this button and this takes them to the thank you page. All right guys, so notice the format here. I have my full website address right in there and I just put that right in and then the slash and the page. So it's just a simply a URL there. Now the alignment is gonna allow us to align our button and this is essentially how you're gonna to wanna to align your button. If you want it aligned by left, which is the default, or if you want it centered, aligned to the right, or justified is going to go ahead and take up the entire column width for the button here. So for this sake, we'll just center our button and make it nice and simple here. All right, now the size is going to be very easy to use. You simply have a small button, which is the default, or you can go extra small, which is really small there, um, medium, large, or extra large, and you see it gets a little bit bigger each time you do that, each time you up the size there, and that's going to be for the text as well as the actual size of the button. So we'll just leave ours at medium for now. That's a good size button right there. And then if we need an icon, we can go ahead and do that. Now this is one thing that is a little bit different in Elementor Pro versus Elementor Free. As far as I understand, in Elementor Pro, you're gonna have the actual icon library where you can go ahead and browse through a whole list of different icons that are available. In uh, Elementor Free, you're gonna have to go ahead and kind of pick and choose maybe from a drop down. I can't totally remember how they do it, but this whole library here that that you can go through and see what you like here. This is only gonna be, as far as I understand, in Elementor Pro. So let's go ahead and let's put, maybe this is gonna be a transaction, so let me go ahead and search for a transaction here. All right, so I like this credit card icon right here. It kinda helps them see that this is gonna be a payment. And then let me just show you how you would go ahead and line this all up here. So the icon position you have before, after, that's essentially gonna put it before the text or after the text. So if I put after here, you can see it shows up after. Typically icons are gonna be before. Um, and then let's go ahead and go down here. The icon spacing, this is the actual spacing between the text and the icon. So set that whatever size you need. We can just go ahead and leave it at the default for this example. And then your button ID, this is gonna be if you're setting IDs and going to refer to it later in CSS styling code. If you're not, you probably don't need to worry about this too much. Um, you can go ahead, they have dynamic options. I believe, again, that's only an Elementor Pro feature. 
probably don't worry about it too much if you're not going to be referring to it later. If you are going to be, you can just set that button ID right there. So let's go ahead and jump into the actual styling of this button now. All right, guys, so first things first, under the Style tab, as you will notice, a lot of the same options are here that are in other elements for styling. So we have typography right here. We can go ahead and edit that. This is how you're going to size the actual text that is in your button. You can just simply drag and drop right there and select which size text you would like. Um, let's just go ahead and leave it at the default. The weight is actually going to be the thickness of your text. So if you click that, you can also do normal, bold, or anything like that or very skinny is going to be a lower number and thicker is going to be a higher number. Transform if you need to change it all to uppercase or lowercase. For this example, let's just change it to uppercase. I think it looks a little bit better in this button. Um, for the style, we can go ahead and change it to italic or oblique, anything like that. Decoration if we need underline or anything like that. Um, we probably don't need anything like that in this example, so we'll just leave it for that. Um, line height, if you have multiple lines, um, let's say it says like get and then started down below it, the line height is going to adjust how closely those words are together. In the letter spacing, we can push this out and you'll see the, the letters are getting spread out more or we can pull it back in and it's kind of tightening back up. So let's go ahead and keep it just at its default there and we'll scroll down. That is everything for typography right there. And then we can go ahead and go to text shadow. This is actually going to put a shadow behind the text and in front of the button. So if we go ahead and add this right here, let's move it over to the horizontal a little bit and vertical a little bit. So this is actually going to bring a, so there's the text and then there's a shadow that's kind of back and off a little bit. And then there's the button behind it. So if we zoom in here, you can kind of see that shadow is now in the back. It's, it's not super defined, but you can kind of see it there. If we turn the blur down a little bit, you can see it a little bit more. There we go. So we turn the blur down a little bit and there, that's more what it looks like there. So um, for this case, we're probably not gonna need any kind of shadow. So we'll just take that off. You just click this little reset and that'll take it off for you. Um, now we get into the actual styling of the button. So we're gonna go ahead and click normal is going to be how the button sits normally. And then we have hover how the button is changed when you hover over it. Um, again, remember that's not going to be super important for mobile. It's more going to be for desktop because you're using a mouse and you're actually hovering over it. Whereas mobile, you're actually clicking on it. So just keep that in mind when you're designing for, designing for hover is that it's probably not going to be used that much other than for desktop. So let's go ahead and design with normal. All right, so under normal here, we're going to go ahead and click text color and we just click on this little checkerboard right here. And this allows us to just simply drag and drop and select that color that we want just like that. You can put in an HTML code right there and hex code, color code right there if you need to, but that's pretty much it. You can adjust the transparency if you need. See how it's getting a little bit more transparent and almost disappearing there. I keep mine in 100% transparency and I've set up in my default color codes that I will keep it at just white. So if I clear this out, it will default back to white. So that's how I'm going to leave it here. Um, for the background color, now I have an awesome website here. This is convertkit.com. And if you go and check out, this is one of their blog posts here, I believe. And it's eight call to action examples for your next landing page. It's a great blog post. Um, be sure to check this out. It's convertkit.com. Um, and yeah, they have here listed choosing a call to action button color and why you would want to choose different colors and, and what kind of feelings and and emotions are brought up when you see different colored buttons. And so you can go ahead and go through. I highly recommend you check out this article, kind of take a look at it, see which one works for you best, which color is most what you're trying to promote. But let's just go ahead and read maybe like two of them here for red. The uh, the emotions that it brings out is it says red is energy, increases heart rate, creates urgency, often seen in clearance sales. So if that's what you're trying to promote, if your offer is, you know, an amazing deal, like some like clearanced out deal, um, if it's like high energy, if you're trying to push some like urgency, you might want to use a red button. That might be what you're trying to you know, the, the background color that you want for your call to action button. Um, let's check out like green over here. So green associated with wealth, the easiest color for your eyes to process and use to relax in stores. 
So if you're looking, maybe you know, your maybe your uh, offer is something to do with wealth or money or, or finance. You might want to use green. You see a lot of these like financial companies use the color green, and that's because it's closely related with wealth and money and things like that. So be sure and check this out. You might be able to find which button is best for you. For now, let's just go ahead and use red because we'll just say that this is a call to action button for some certain deal that we're offering. So all I'm going to do is go over here to background color. I'm going to go ahead and drag my slider over to the red category. So we'll just put it, yeah, we'll put it right there and then just go ahead and move this around until we get the color red. So perfect. There's a red right there, maybe a little bit brighter. That's a little too bright. Maybe like right there. Perfect. Okay. So we have our background color set and our button you can see is coming together very nicely here. So if we go to border type, we can go ahead and select a border that we would like for our button. You go ahead and select it and it'll come up with a drop down for the width of the border. We can go ahead and set that right here. Um, now by default, the color it looks like it's white. We can go ahead and adjust that here and let's make it maybe like a blue just so you can see it here. So there's that blue, you can see here's the width of the border actually growing and shrinking. Um, for this case, we're not even gonna need any border, we'll just set it to none. And that brings us to border radius, which is actually the roundness of the corners of the button. So if you drop it down to zero, that's going to be a completely square button. So if I zoom in here a little bit, you can see the corners are completely um, square or, or sharp there, I should say. And uh, if we up the border radius, you can see they come in a little bit, so they're more rounded. If you keep moving it up, then it moves all the way into like almost like a completely rounded button where it was a circle and then the text kind of pushes out the edges. So it's like a circle, but it's just kind of an expanded circle there. So um, if you like that style, you can definitely use that. Um, a lot of you know landing pages use that style of button now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just leave it at its default, which is just slightly rounded there. And then uh, the same thing would go for a box shadow here, where you can just go ahead and click this little edit button. And uh, just like we talked about the shadows on the text earlier, we can move this horizontal over, and that's going to be along the x-axis there. And the vertical is going to be along the y-axis there. So we can go ahead and adjust that as we need. The blur is going to be the sharpness of the shadow or really blurred out there and the spread is going to be the actual spread of how far the shadow spreads out or spreads in there. So we're going to go ahead and just click this reset because we don't need any shadow for this button um, and that's pretty much it guys. Let's move into the advanced tab and get a little bit more advanced on this button. Alright guys so you use your margin here you can set top right bottom left or you can break all the values and set specific for maybe you just want a margin on the left of 31 pixels. This is going to be the margin between elements. So let's say you have your button right here and you have an image right here. That space in between is the margin there. So let's go ahead and just leave it here at zero and keep them linked there. You can actually just backspace this and it'll get rid of it and reset it to default. The uh, padding is going to be the space in between your element and the surrounding um, containing container. So for example, we have this column here. We can go ahead and up the padding and you'll see there's now space in between our actual element here and the container it's in, which is this column here. So we can go ahead and just leave that at zero there. All right, and the Z index is a third axis. It's the Z axis. So if this is the web page right here and my eyes are looking down on it like this, this is where it stacks on the z-axis coming up at me. So if I'm looking at the screen, it's actually coming up at me. So um, if you have maybe an image, you know, this is the page again, you have an image laying there, and then you want to put a button on top of it, you can put that there, the image maybe a z-index of 1, and the button z-index of 2. A higher number is going to stack it higher on the levels, and a lower number is going to stack it lower on the levels. So it doesn't really matter what number you set, your you know base image could be a Z index of one and your button uh, button Z index could be a Z index of 158. That would stack it just to higher than the image. So if you need that, if you're stacking multiple elements, that's right there. Um, a few other things just to wrap up here that I wanted to show you is motion effects here. You can create this button sticky by selecting which um, either the top or bottom you'd like to stick it to. So we'll just put top for now 
and as I scroll down, this button actually gets stuck to the top. Now, if you want to adjust where that's at, you can actually go ahead and click the, click advance. Um, let's uncheck the link and let's make a maybe, I don't know, let's just say maybe a hundred-ish, hundred-ish pixel margin from the top. And then when we actually scroll down and we have our sticky set, you'll see the button actually sticks up there, but it's set to that 100 pixel margin. So we can go ahead and just take that off there and reset this and we will take our sticky effect off back to none there. So that's pretty much how you can do that. Um, if you do want to do it actually through the sticky settings, you can do that right here. You can just go ahead and click sticky top and offset. We'll just set it to maybe like 100. And now when we scroll, you'll see it actually sticks right there. So if you want to manipulate it within margin, you can. Just know that might affect how it lays on the page. If you want to manipulate it through the sticky settings, you can actually do that right there. So um, let's, let's turn this off here and let's just keep going on. I want to show you here the responsive because this is important, especially when you're working with multiple devices such as desktop, tablet, and mobile. Um, this is going to allow you to hide it on a specific device and that is based on the device's screen size. So if I shrink my desktop browser, if I actually click and drag and shrink this down, I can actually drag it all the way down to a mobile size and then all the mobile rules will actually apply to it. So just keep that in mind that that is based on the screen size here. So if I want to hide this on desktop, I can just simply click that. And when I load up the page on desktop, it will be completely gone. If I want to switch that and maybe hide it on tablet and hide it on mobile, but keep it on desktop, I can do that. And when I go on on mobile, it will be completely gone. But when I go on on desktop, I will see the button right there. And that about wraps it up for buttons, guys. That was very in-depth. And now you should know a lot about how to manipulate and style your buttons and make them work for you. So call to action buttons are so important. The main action that you want the user to take is actually click on this button so I highly recommend you take time you know even split test a B test what color works best for you maybe different colors work better better than others and uh, maybe your audience responds differently to different colors and different sizes so be sure and test all of that out but thank you guys so much for watching I really hope you have seen just how easy it is to build with Elementor and uh, you know if there are more Elementor Pro features um, stuff that we didn't even talk about like you know animated headlines and and Facebook comments and testimonials and so many other things so if you're interested in that be sure and check the link down below for that Elementor Pro link also guys thank you just so much for subscribing and liking I want to invite you one more time here if you're not a part of the family be sure and subscribe and join the family I would really appreciate it and uh, that's it guys for buttons today let's go ahead and check back in the future for other Elementor videos be sure and check the cards if you haven't I have other videos all about Elementor and uh, yeah I will catch you guys next time take care